previously on Begin Again. Ah, oh, man. The motor's no good. Really? Yeah, it sucks. It's got no power. It's not revving. Yeah, it's time for a new engine. Hey everybody, welcome back to Begin Again. You know, if you've been following me for the last year, you know that I've been driving a shifter cart with a Sodi cart chassis and a Honda stock ProMoto engine. And while that's been a great tool to learn how to drive and, and get involved with shifter carts and all that, we all know that if you've seen my video about the KZ versus the Honda engine, you know I'm quite a bit down on power. Not the fault of the Honda, it's just that the KZ engine is a modern engine and it's got a whole lot more horsepower. It's time to get a new engine, so I called my buddy Mike Jones, who's the owner of the Dallas Karting Complex, told him what I was thinking about, and he said, hey, bring your stuff on over, I'll take care of you. So follow me and let's see what Mike has in mind. I'm pulling together a new rock engine. Now, if you've been following me on some of my videos, you know that I've been really struggling on a couple of areas with the Honda that I've been running. It's not competitive against the new engines, and we've been having some technical issues as well. So, time to make a next step forward here. We're going to move on with the rock engine. So, I'm going to ask Mike, Mike. What are we looking at here? Uh, this is the uh, the replacement. Finally, the that's going to re you know replace the Honda engine, and uh, it is the the Vortex Rock 125 cc shifter engine. Um, magnificent piece right out of the box. It, uh, the cost is right. The placement on the cart, the carburetor's in the front. The pipe comes out the back just as it should. Yep. Um, the the engine is uh, makes really really good torque and horsepower. Uh, makes both maximum torque at about 13,900 RPM and um, maximum horsepower is about 43 horsepower at about 14,000 RPM. Wow. So literally we, we don't do anything to the engine, do a little bit of carburation, uh, but right out of the box it is a monster. Looking and forward to it. Extremely reliability. That's that's what we're all about is reliability. Yeah, I'm, I'm all about it. You know, one of my things is is that with the job that I have and family commitments and all that, I don't have a lot of time to deal with a finicky engine. And so in my conversations with Mike, he was saying, dude, go with the rock. You'll be really happy with it. And so Mike's never steered me wrong. So we're going to put this thing on here and figure out what we've got. So here we go. Here we go. Nice thing about it is it does come with a magnesium motor mount too. <laughs> Everything is in the box. I love it. It's what the, uh, you know, the, the chassis is designed around the engine, and that's exactly what we're doing here, is we're just getting back to more modern times. Right. So all I'm doing is I'm just moving these, these uh, jam nuts back so we can, ha we can move the engine back as far as we can. And the idea of moving the engine all the way back is for what? Well, to give us better clearance, okay. uh, better clearance with the shift rod, get this out of your elbow, you know, so it's not so much up in the front. My elbow will thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and pull that top one out because we're not going to use it. Move it all the way back. Wow. Looks good. Way back. So. I've already got the fuel filter in here. Okay. Uh, we're going to cut this down a little bit. So these are just the oscillators that go on for the coil, just to... Uh, okay. Keep all the interferences we can out of the... Yep. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why I came to Mike and said, yeah, let's do this together. <laughs> <laughs> Got both hands in my pocket kind of going, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, it's like Mike once told me, he said, if you think I'm the brain trust, you have a big problem. <laughs> Mounting up the coil. So, Mike, in driving this engine versus a Honda, how big of a difference is there? Things that I need to be thinking about and how I. Well, 
Yeah, it's they're they're two different two different engines by far. So um, this engine obviously has a uh, dry clutch. Mm -hmm. So when uh, the tires are hot, there's no more burnouts. Those are gone <laughs> because when the tires are hot, it will smoke the clutch if they're uh, if, if if they're if they're warm enough. Right. Wow. So uh, okay. you can't just do uh, donuts and burnouts for days anymore. Okay. Uh, this is the uh, bracket for the for the fuel pump. And then to put on the spark plug boot, and it literally just kind of threads on, if you will. You just kind of push it in while you're pushing the boot on, just to make contact inside that piece of the boot. Yeah. And then uh, if we ever have ignition problems, then one of the first things to ever check is this right here. So sometimes uh, after a few months of use, if you're getting any kind of intermitting problem in the ignition, uh, we'll just go in and clip the very tip of that coil wire and then just re-thread it back re on. Re-thread it, yep. Well, you're gonna fall forward. Faster, faster. <laughs> faster. <laughs> you remember Sean Owens? Yeah. You know, he was with us for about, I don't know, 10 years or so. Left to go over to Crosslink and ran the uh, F1 team or F4 team, yep. uh, along with their karting team. Well, he was out here last week, and I noticed that uh, he was out working with some of the drivers. And I look over in his toolbox, and I find this. This is a rod out of a uh, IAMI 125cc shifter cart that I welded on a uh, socket to use as a spark plug wrench. I love and it. I found this in his toolbox and I snagged it. So we're gonna find out how much he really watches videos so he finds out who has my spark plug wrench back. <laughs> the next thing we're gonna do is, uh, the first thing to do is really to uh, align the, the, the sprocket length or the chain length. Yep. And then once we get the chain on, then we'll set up the, uh, the shift linkage and everything goes that first. So we have to do the chain first. Okay. Oh, Jack's going to be so happy, isn't he? Oh, my God. Well, you saw the one video where he, he pulls in after driving my car, and he goes, I know what the problem is. It's your engine. I mean, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he and I had a good conversation last week, and uh, yeah. I will have to say he said it again. <laughs> how, how bad the, the engine is. Huh? The problem with Richard's cart is the engine. It just sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jack. <laughs> oh, he's a good dude. Yeah, he's been around a long time, too. Yeah, he, has. he knows his way around the track, that's yeah, for sure. Is. Yeah, he's pissing off the young guys, that's for sure. Oh, yeah? Oh, my God, yes. Nice. So, since we're going to be using a uh, master length, we want the chain to end up with two males right. on each end. Okay, so we've uh, pushed the pin out now. Separate the chain. The really greatest thing about this engine package is the price point. You know, back in the day, uh, the Honda days, you get to pay for what you get. So if you want that prize, A, a quality or A plus quality cylinder, it's expensive. Yep. Uh, these, these cylinders are all uh, uh, cut by CNC, so ultimately they're all about the same. Mm-hmm. And um, it definitely shows on the track because you don't ever see what really one particular engine just outrunning the other ones. Right. There, there we go. Is. That's the sound that it makes. Yep. Push the engine all the way forward. Run our bolt up. And on our tension belt, we just want to really put it, just barely touch the back of the motor. Engine still has probably a little bit too much play for right now. That's it, about right there. A little less than half inch play, probably. Oh wow, pretty loose then. 
not too loose. And then we're we're obviously going to keep an eye on that when we start up the engine for the first time because mm -hmm. it will stretch to some degree. Okay. Um, big 428 chain didn't after the initial stretch. It really doesn't change much after that. Yeah. Yeah. So at this point, I'd like to just roll the roll the chain and make sure it is centered in between the uh, and the sprocket. All that looks teeth. good to yep. me. Yep. Oh, I guess I already did. Oh, yeah. wow. You did a great job of eyeballing that, man. <laughs> I'm impressed. I've done it once or twice. Yeah, I think you've done it once or twice. Yeah. Because the seat stay comes so close, mm -hmm. I do rock the, the J, well, the J arm, so as it's commonly known. Yep. I do rock it back about two teeth on oh. the spline, on the shift, on the shift shaft. Next is the, uh, known as kind of a clevis for the clutch cable. Okay, and it just threads into the front of the housing on the uh, on the engine, so the the clutch housing will just slip through here. The cable will go directly through here mm -hmm. into the clutch lever. Nice. There we go. All right. This is a nice little piece that Sweet Tech makes. It's a little clevis for the clutch. It uh -huh. just hooks right onto the. Uh, And this has a lock nut on the back side, so there's really no reason to tighten that down as tight as you can. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll just end up bending that clevis. Okay. I think it's just made out of soft stainless anyway. Okay. So, uh, yeah. And all carts are going to have a different type of clutch handle. Mm -hmm. uh, our Sodi carts actually use the uh, housing more so than the cable because the housing is a little stronger anyway, and you never wear out a cable this way. And we're just going to put some tension on that cable. Check to make sure everything is cleared back here. It looks good. Tighten down our tension bolt on the clutch handle. And then just, for now, we're just going to get this out of the way so we don't put our eyes out. <laughs> right. Lord knows we need those. Yeah, we need those. Okay, so uh, next at this point, we can go ahead and hook up the throttle cable. Join me for part two, where Mike and I will finish out the installation of my new rock shifter engine, including tuning the carb, installing the water pump, fitting the coolant lines, and eventually firing it up for the very first time. Thanks for watching.